When you cut your finger and you need a Band-Aid, you need it immediately, not in two business days waiting for delivery, right? Plant friends, it's the same thing with houseplants. When your plants get a pest infestation, fungus, any sort of problem, you need to be armed with whatever you need to immediately address the problem, okay? Because pests, disease, these things are going to happen in plant parenthood. It's not if, it's when. And all you need to do is be prepared. And plant friend, if this is overwhelming, I have your back. Today, we're going to go through my entire houseplant first aid kit and empower you to understand exactly what you need to have and when you need to use it. Growing Joy. Welcome to Growing Joy with Maria Plant Friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I am here to help you care for plants and cultivate joy. I've been doing this on my podcast, Growing Joy with Plants, for the last seven years, tracking my progress of going from epic plant killer, embarrassing plant killer, to happy plant lady. And I have to tell you, a huge part of that journey has been understanding how to handle the inevitable plant problems that are going to arise, especially if you've been caring for plants for seven years like I have, right? This is a lifelong hobby, which is amazing, but it means that the occasional fungus gnat outbreak is going to descend upon your home, no matter how hard you try for it not to happen. So over the years, I've assembled what I like to call my houseplant first aid kit. It sits in my kitchen at the ready. I can pick it up and move it around wherever I have to take it. I bought this thing for like $5 at the dollar store, and it's been so useful because when something happens, I can immediately address the issue. I think that's such a big part of plant parenthood and about being successful in plant parenthood, right? Because if you have spider mites, you don't want to give it another day to continue descending and multiplying and taking over your whole plant collection. You want to bam jump in there immediately. So I want to show you everything that I have. Everything is going to be linked below in case you need to pick something up. And we're going to, I think I'm going to break this down into tools and then sprays, lotions, potions. We're going to go in order of like easiest to hardest. And you're probably going to have a lot of these things lying around. So I highly suggest you pull them into one convenient area so you know where they are when you need to use them. So let's begin. Let's start with tools. First, we're going to talk about moisture meters. These were big for me in the beginning of plant parenthood when I was still understanding what was overwatering and underwatering my plants. So I used to be a cereal overwaterer. Then I went through a phase where I was a cereal underwaterer. But understanding the moisture of your soil is so important because if you overwater, you're going to get fungus gnats. If you underwater, you might accidentally kill your plant, right? And it's kind of confusing. What does moist soil mean? Like, should it be super wet? Should it be just light, lightly moist to touch? So getting a moisture meter like this, you can order them online. They're super affordable. They're basically probes. You stick them into your houseplant pot and it tells you on the reader, is it dry or is it moist? When I got started, I would water the plant. I would take a read immediately after watering it. And then every day I would stick this in the soil and I would see how many days it took for the soil to get dry again. I have a whole YouTube video on how I use these. I'm going to link it right above in case you want to check it out. So that's our first tool. Our second tool also aligned with soil moisture is this like very sexy moisture tool. So basically you put it in the soil and when you pull it out, it catches a bit of soil at every part of the pot. So what you'll learn is sometimes the bottom half of the pot is still going to be moist. The top is going to be dry. So if you ever have a big pot that you have to figure out is the you know bottom half of the pot still wet, you can put this in and pull it out and check those bottom rungs. I thought this was really cool. Next is plant specific snippers. Okay. Don't be snipping your fungal infested houseplants or your spider mite infested houseplants with your kitchen shears, okay? Get snippers, a pair of scissors. They don't have to be fancy, but have a pair of scissors that you are going to dedicate only for your plants and have them at the ready. You know scissors are like one of those things where the minute you need them, you can't find them, but then when you don't need them, you find like three pairs. Just have a pair of houseplant scissors. These are really cool because they have the little safety grip here and they have this ergonomic little finger holder. I like these for safety reasons. They come with a little sheath and they're like insanely sharp. I always have a few of these. I have like so many pairs of these scissors. It's ridiculous. It's unnecessary. Another tool that I love is my PAR meter. PAR, P-A-R. Um, this measures light. So you take this top off 
turn it on and you can measure light at a glimpse, like how bright a certain area is. You can also take a daily light integral with this to understand how much light an area of your house actually gets. So if you really struggle to understand what your indoor lighting options are or what your indoor lighting environment is, this might be great for you to be able to walk around your house, see what the measurement is, and then be able to put different plants in different areas accordingly. If you don't want to invest in this, this is probably the most expensive thing out of my entire kit. I highly suggest downloading my free Understanding Natural Light worksheet. It's linked below. It'll take you through three days of tracking your light for free. It's super easy. It's free. You don't spend a dime doing it. And at the end of the three days, you're going to understand what your indoor lighting environment is. So grab it if you need it, my plant friend. I also always have a couple of like little tools for repotting. Let me tell you, if you ever have a plant that starts to wilt because it is too dry, if you underwater a plant to the point that uh, it's so dry it doesn't absorb water anymore, the plant is going to be so sad and wilted. You can't rehydrate the soil. If you water it, it just like goes out, out the side of the pot. You're going to take a chopstick, okay? Talk about affordable, right? You're going to take a chopstick, and this is what you can do to aerate the soil. You go into the pot, and you kind of wiggle around very gently, and it's going to help the soil aerate and and be able to absorb water again, then I would bottom water to rehydrate that soil. I'm going to have a whole nother video on bottom watering coming to you sometime in the next couple of months. What other tools do I have in here that I have to show you? Oh, my favorite tool, the most important $10 I've ever spent on my houseplant first aid kit and maybe my houseplant collection is this little guy. Literally $10 on Amazon. Sometimes it's on sale for even less than that. This is a little magnifying loop. It's a magnifying loop that has a light on it. So when you have, can you see the light? Yeah. So when you say you suspect that you have a pest infestation, you take this thing, you hold it up. If this is the leaf, it magnifies the pest because sometimes it's too dark for you to see like under the leaves and stuff. You hold it up to the leaf and then you can look through and it magnifies the pests. A lot of pests are too small to identify with your eye. And you might also be able to see that your plant has a pest, but you can't identify it with your naked eye. White fly is a great example of this. I had white flies. I knew I had a pest. I could see it flying around. I couldn't get my eye on its little body. I was able to use this magnifying loop to address what they were and then appropriately treat, right? Because different pests need different types of insecticide, horticultural soaps, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And so if you have mites, you need like a mite specific insecticide. So identifying what you have is really important. And I have found that this has been an incredible investment. So happy I did it. I use it all the time. It's so fun to have. I was going to say it's fun to pull out at parties, but I don't want to sound like too much of a nerd. If you have a moisture-loving, humidity-loving plant that is suffering from lack of humidity, you can use a humidity dome to resuscitate it. So you can use a plastic bag. You can literally like put your plant in a plastic bag and resuscitate it. I do have a video showing how I resuscitated a calathea doing this method. But I also always have a couple of these glass domes on hand. Right now I have an anthurium crystallinum that the leaves dropped when winter came. So I see new growth at the nub, right? I've been watering it even though it hasn't had any leaves. I've had this on top of it. It's creating a really nice humid environment for these little new growth points to grow and hopefully accelerate the growth of the plant. So I think this is really amazing. This is one of my newest additions to my first aid kit, and I cannot believe it's taken me seven years to get these. It's the simplest idea, and it's so smart. These are just microfiber gloves. So if you have scale, I also have rubber gloves in here. If you ever have scale, don't pick your scale under your fingernails with no gloves on. Put gloves on and then physically remove it, right? There are some pests that we get, mealybugs, scale, pests that you actually have to physically remove from a plant. Always have some latex or plastic gloves in your kit that you can immediately use. But the other thing that I found that have worked really great is these microfiber gloves. You can actually use them to like remove scale from the top of a leaf. Or if you have leaves that aren't photosynthesizing properly because they're covered in dust, these gloves are amazing. You just put them on, you go top, bottom of the leaf, pull it, and the leaf is clean. It's amazing for like your big monsteras. I've been using these way more than I thought I was going to. I'm very impressed. Uh, we are the wild is the name of this company. 
I also have a microfiber towel. Just having these soft materials is really good for cleaning your plants. And last but not least, your good old fashioned sticky traps. I genuinely don't know why they haven't made prettier versions of these yet. They've been around for so long. Um, but if you have fungus gnats, I feel like fungus gnats is one of the biggest things that people really struggle with. Having sticky traps on hand so the minute you see a fungus gnat outbreak, you can get in there and put these sticky traps in the pot these will catch the adult fungus gnats, right? So with fungus gnats, you have to treat in the soil for the larva, and then you have to catch the adult fungus gnats. And this is a great tool to have so you can immediately start catching those adults so they don't keep multiplying. And then speaking of fungus gnats, as we move into the lotions and potions section of this video, fungus gnat death drops, BT, bacillus, thuringiensis, I'm mispronouncing that, but BT is great for treating the soil, treating the larva of fungus gnats. My friend, Happy Happy Houseplant, she's a fellow plant fluencer, just came out with this product. It's called Liquid Death, or it's Death Drops, Fungus Gnat Death Drops. You literally just put this in your watering can and you use it as a drench. So if you get fungus gnats, I highly recommend Sticky Trap, Fungus Gnat Death Drop combo, and they'll be gone really quickly. If you have a pest outbreak, I have an entire podcast episode on Growing Joy with Plants about how to identify and eradicate every single houseplant pest. So listen to that episode and save that episode for when pests descend. Moving right along. Okay, now we're getting into sprays. So now we're going to move into what I call the lotions and potions section of today's video. And the main things that we're going to talk about is horticultural oils and horticultural insecticidal soaps. So what the soaps do is the soaps break down the exoskeleton of the pests that are on the plant. So obviously the pest is going to die. Sad, but effective, right? So insecticidal soaps, that's like, um, I have a lot of bonide, but you know, you can, you can find many different brands of this at the store. But insecticidal soaps are something that you spray the entire plant down and it's going to attack the bug from the outside in. You can use an insecticidal soap preventatively, like do it once a quarter, like spray your plants down or or you can use it pretty much for most houseplant pests. Horticultural oils, on the other hand, smother pests. So pests like breathe through their, I believe their exoskeleton and the oils basically smother the pests and they can't breathe anymore and then they die. This is also where you have to sometimes get a little bit specific, especially mites. Mites in general are pretty resistant to some oils and soap. So just make sure like this is a specific mite oil. Identification is really important when treating pests. I don't mean to make this like all about pests, but I feel like that's the biggest pain point for so many of us. And then one other thing I wanted to talk about was neem oil. So I have multiple neem oils in here, one from Happy Happy Houseplant and one from We Are the Wild. You can use neem oil as a way to smother pests, but also a lot of people use neem oil as a way to shine their leaves and clean their leaves. So if you wanted to go and use those gloves that I was showing, you could put like a little bit of neem oil on the gloves and shine the leaves a little bit. Just be careful with leaf shine when you're up against a window. You sometimes, if you use leaf shine, it can make the leaves burn a little bit easier. So just be mindful when using neem oil in that capacity. And last but not least, as we come to an end of the tour of my houseplant first aid kit, uh, boy, I have a lot of stuff in here. Actually, I have two more things to show you. Systemic. It took me a long time to get this because, I don't know, systemic I feel like has a bad rap in the houseplant community, but let me be real with you plant friends. Sometimes you need systemic, like nothing else does it. This white fly outbreak I was talking about where I couldn't identify it, I figured it out. I used the sprays, I used the oils, I showered them in the shower. Nothing was working and so I needed to take the systemic route. So while oils and soaps kill pests from the outside in, systemics kill them from the inside out. So you sprinkle this on the soil, you water it in, the plant absorbs it and it basically turns the plant toxic for pests. So then when the pests feed on the plant, they eat the plant and it's toxic and it kills them. It's effective. <laughs> you want to be careful because the plant is toxic and then, you know, be mindful if you have little kids and be mindful if you have pets, like do your research, make your own choice for your own life. Disclaimer, I don't have pets or kids, so this isn't a big deal for me to be using in my house at this moment. But this sometimes is very important. And when you need this, you need it immediately. Like no more time left to like go running around for this. So learn from my mistakes where it took me two days to get this because I live far away from garden centers. And last but not least, 
plant food. Sometimes your plants go south because they need fertilizer. So if you're giving your plants the right amount of light, you're watering them correctly, if they've been in the same pot for a while, they might have just depleted all of the nutrients of that potting mix. So I always recommend having a gentle fertilizer on hand. This one is a Spoma Organic Indoor Liquid Fertilizer. They make it so easy. Literally, you just, this is the measuring cap for the liquid. You pour it in here, you dump it in your watering can, and then you water your houseplants with it. So if you notice that a plant doesn't seem to be doing great, and you've kind of done everything else, you've inspected for pests, you know that's not what the situation is, always having a little bit of fertilizer never hurt anyone. So I hope this video helped you. It's taken me seven years to collect all of these things. We're going to link everything below in case you just want to build, build, build for yourself. Let me know if you think I missed anything. Do you have anything in your first aid kit that I'm forgetting about? Let me know in the comments. Like this video. Subscribe. Tell the YouTube fairy gods that you like this channel so I can keep making amazing planty videos for you. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.